is like the Lord. There is no one who is like the Lord. He is strong and mighty. Who is like the Lord? He is worthy. Stand up and give Him the praise. Who is like the Lord? There is no one who is like the Lord.
our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Sing it again. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Oh, yeah. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are an awesome God. Father, I pray that we would begin to grasp that afresh. Lord, let us have that vision that Isaiah received when he saw you high and lifted up and your glory was filling the temple. And Lord, he was reduced to saying, God, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And Lord, you purged his sin and you commissioned him to go. And all he could say is, Lord, I'm here. Send me. Father, let us have that kind of vision today. Let us behold you in your glory, your majesty, and your holiness. Father, we need that today. Lord, we bless you. We praise your name because of who you are. There is none like you because you are the great I am.
the mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. Because you are the great I am. You are the great I am. And Lord, that, that takes in everything. You are the I am. There is, there is none else. There is none other. You are the one true living God. And we worship you today. We bless your name, Jesus. You are worthy. God, we're so thankful that you have purchased for us our salvation God our freedom Lord we are removed from the captivity of slavery to sin and Satan and Lord I thank you that we've been transferred translated removed from the kingdom of darkness and established in the kingdom of light God you are worthy and you alone are worthy and Lord I thank you that today as we worship we can join with the host of heaven the saints of all ages around your throne and say worthy Worthy is the Lamb. There is none like you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. a new song to him who sits on 
heaven's mercy seat. Lift it up again. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I say 
sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you yes lord Yes, Lord, we adore you this morning. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Lord, I thank you that you sit at heaven's mercy seat today. And I thank you, Lord, for mercy and amazing grace. And God, that's what we need above all things. So we worship you today. Lord, we give you this offering of worship. God, I pray that it would be a sweet fragrance to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. If you will, for a few moments, open your Bible to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12 says this, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, behold a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God, to his throne. And the woman fled to the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, He persecuted the woman which which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly to the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. 
And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I realize that's a rather lengthy text, but I wanted you to see the whole picture before I talk about the part of it that's relevant. You know, tomorrow we begin uh, Vacation Bible School, and as I said before, it's going to be unique. It's going to be the most unusual we've ever had. And something that Jeremiah said as he began to, he and Angela began to talk about this and what God was speaking to them really stuck with me. He said, I want it to be a Bible school where there's no fluff. You know, a lot of times we concentrate, I think, more on children having a good time than on the learning to know the risen Savior and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we want children, of course, to have a good time, but the focus is not going to be on fun, but it's going to be on God this year. And the reason is this. We're in a time of crisis. This nation is in a crisis that we've never known before. And I was just thinking about some of the things that we're facing. I'm going to give you the bad news first, and then I'll give you the good news, okay? I always like to get the bad news out of the way first. Our national debt is out of control, and it's unpayable. It can't be paid. Analysts tell us that a collapse is imminent and inevitable. Our relations with Russia and China are the most fragile since the Cold War. ISIS is on the rise. Racial violence is as bad as it was in the 60s. Murder is rampant. And as you think about those things, let me remind you of something that uh, the prophet Joel talked about. And most of you are, know exactly what I'm going to read to you. But it's in Joel chapter 2, verses 30 and 31. He said, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. There's been so much talk about uh, blood moons lately. I think everybody has heard that. And talking about a tetrad, and of course a tetrad is four full moons with no partial eclipses in, in between. I mean four uh, lunar eclipses, total eclipses, without a partial in between. The thing that makes it interesting is that all of these fall on the Feast of the Lord or what people have called the Jewish Feast Day. It began, this, this set, and there's only been seven since Jesus walked the earth. This set began last year on Passover. And the final one will be this year uh, on Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, which is September the 28th. Now you couple the fact that we are seeing signs in the heavens, so to speak, just as Joel was talking about, this, this, these four, what's come to be called blood moons, all falling on Jewish feast days. Or, or, uh, you know, only one time, the next time that'll happen will be 400 years from now, if time goes on. So that's, that's a rather unique thing. And then, of course, we're living in a Shemitah year. And if you don't know what a Shemitah is, you go back and you read the Old Testament. And what God told his people was this. He said, six years, do your business, farm the land, reap the harvest. But the seventh year is going to be a year of rest. It's going to be a sabbatical or, or a Sabbath year. And during that year, you, you're not going to harvest the crops. During that year, you're not going to do business. And all debts will be wiped out. Everything will return to an even state. So the Jewish people kept that for a while, and God blessed them tremendously, but the time came when they stopped doing it, and they kept up the commerce, and they, wouldn't, they kept exacting their debts, and what God meant for them for a blessing became a curse to them. Now, as you go back and you look through history, uh, it seems that things have happened in this nation on a seven-year cycle. You go back and you look at the Shemitah years from 1973 to the present time, and you'll find on each one of those, that seventh year, there was some kind of economic disaster, some kind of collapse, and they've become more and more profound. In fact, the last two that we had were on in Shemitah years, 
and there's this year of course is another it ends on September 13th and the Shemitah year ends on in the Hebrew calendar or the Jewish calendar on Elul 29 that's the day of release that was the exact day that the last two stock market crashes that we experienced took place I mean the largest point drop the largest percentage drop in history happened the previous two seven-year cycles on that exact day so here we are again and that's coming up September 13th also solar eclipse on and on it's, it's just interesting that the signs that we're seeing in heaven coupled with what's taking place on earth now most of you are familiar with uh, a, a word that was spoken by our leaders after 9-11 after that 9-11 tragedy and it's over in the book of Isaiah if you want to look at it with me for just a minute this morning Isaiah chapter 9 there was a book called the harbinger that made this famous but it's interesting as you read it how we have done the same thing that Israel did and it's frightening to me Isaiah chapter 9 beginning in verse 9 or verse 8 it says the Lord sent a word to Jacob and it is lighted upon Israel and all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, Samaria, that say in pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedar. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together. And he goes on with a list of things that are taking place. You see, when Israel suffered an invasion, their response was not repentance before God. Their response was not humbling themselves and crying out to God for forgiveness and mercy and protection. But they said, we're going to, what we had was built of brick. It was torn down, but we're going to come back and build it with hewn stones. We're going to build it stronger. Our, our, our sycamore trees have been chopped down, but we're going to replace them with cedars. And God said, because they answered in the pride and stoutness of heart, then these enemies are going to come together against them and of course that's exactly what happened to the point that, that Israel was destroyed now when 9-11 took place congressional leader after congressional leader stood up and read these very words out of Isaiah and said you know the bricks have fallen but we're going to replace them with hewn stones the sycamore has been cut down but we'll replace it with cedar and I'm not going to go through all, all of it, but if, if you followed it along, you know that that's what we did. We rebuilt, and, you know, we, we didn't repent before God. We said that, you know, we're going to come back stronger than ever, and we were uttering it in pride, and just as that became a curse to Israel, that's become a curse to us. Folks, let me tell you something. Pride will destroy any, anybody. It will destroy a nation. The Bible says to humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. So here's an interesting thing. I was doing a little bit of research, and of course, you know, the, the rebuilding that's taken place, and as most of you know, that sycamore tree that was at ground zero that was destroyed was replaced with a, with a, with a conifer, with an evergreen. The, the, the Hebrew word was an eris, and it meant an evergreen tree. That's what's been translated as cedar in the Word of God. So we did that very thing. We rebuilt and we replaced that destroyed sycamore tree with, 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 with another tree, uh, the same as, as, as the cedar. But here's what happened. Regardless of the efforts that they put into it, that tree started to die. They worked on the tree. They pruned the tree. They took off the dead branches, but the tree kept withering away. And it's interesting. They called it the tree of hope when they planted it. Last year... On uh, last year on Passover, they finally dug it up. It was a dead tree. The next day was the first blood moon, and the tree was pulverized and destroyed on the first blood moon. So, folks, God spoke, and he said, I'm against the cedars of Lebanon. He was talking about coming against those cedars that have been planted in pride, and God's doing the same thing here in America. So when that tree of hope was dug up and destroyed, you could pretty much say hope was destroyed. Hope was lost. 
man's the hope for man to redeem this nation the hope for man to solve the crisis in America is fallacy it's not going to happen whoever goes into office cannot solve this problem the only one that can solve it is almighty God and the only way it can be solved is for God to pour out his spirit grant repentance to this nation that we fall on our knees before him ask for his forgiveness and and say you are our only hope if Israel had done that they would have survived they would have been spared they wouldn't have been destroyed they wouldn't have been dispersed all over the world but they answered in the pride and stoutness of their heart the Bible says and we've done the same thing you know I believe that we're in the most time the most critical time in the history of this nation and as I said before the only hope is revival and I believe with all my heart that judgment has already begun on this nation now the reason I say that is because of what I see going on you know we saw the horrific events down in Charleston just a few days ago you know people together for a prayer meeting somebody comes in and sits in the prayer meeting for an hour and then kills nine people and we're talking about a kid 21 year old boy doing that and we're seeing this repeated all across the nation and you know as I, I shared with the family this morning the Bible says and your children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children but if that's true then the antithesis is true as well if your children are not taught of the Lord the children will not have peace and we're seeing that happen we're seeing that take place judgments beginning on this nation uh, most of you probably have seen in the news or read about it somewhere something that's called Operation Jade Helm and if you haven't I urge you to get online and research that a little bit but Jade Helm is a joint military exercise by all the different branches of the military using special ops and special forces and they said it was going to be in seven states and then they said it was going to be in nine states and we don't know how many states it's going to be in but it's designed to they say to practice for urban warfare and if you go and read the government documentation it talks about to be prepared for civil unrest for emergencies inside the country listen the government knows that this nation is about to come unglued the government knows that if the economy collapses and the entitlement programs are not there, if something happens to the food supply, then rioting is going to, well, you know, any excuse now you see rioting taking place. So the nation is coming apart from the inside out. So God's judgment is on us because our children aren't being taught of God and the peace of God is not there. So all these things are taking place now that's the bad news but now here's the good news judgment had already been declared on Nineveh right God's word to Nineveh 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown but what happened God spoke to a man and he said go and speak this word my word to Nineveh we all know the story of Jonah and we're not going to go through his first part but when Jonah went in obedience to God to Nineveh and he spoke the word of the Lord God granted them repentance you see repentance is not just something that you muster up one day and say I'm gonna to repent today the Bible tells us that repentance is a gift of God so when Jonah went and he preached the word of God that had God had instilled in him and poured into him and he did it in obedience God granted that nation or that city repentance they repented and God spared Nineveh from between 150 and 200 years the destruction was it eventually came but it was pushed back that far because of repentance because they cried out to God now the same thing is true I believe for any nation or any people I believe that God has declared judgment on America but here's the thing God is ready to grant repentance if 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 we'll do what God calls us to do you know the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him you remember that first scripture we read talking about how the great dragon how Satan had spewed out a flood trying to destroy both Israel and those that had the commandments and those that had the testimony of Jesus Christ Folks, Satan is sending out a flood trying to destroy the people of God. But God is able to raise up a standard even in the midst of that flood. 
when God's people were ready to enter into the promised land. And I'm talking about back in the days after they'd come out of Egypt, after they'd wandered in the wilderness, after they'd gotten to the border of the promised land. They were faced with a flood. I'm not going to turn to it, but Joshua chapter 3 tells us that they came to the Jordan River. And the Jordan River was overflowing all of its banks because it was the time of harvest. And it was a tremendous barrier. It was rushing and, and swift and, and it, you know, you, you couldn't cross it. But God spoke to his people and he said, this is what I want you to do. He said, you take the Ark of the Covenant and you walk down into the water. The Bible says that when the priests took up the ark and their feet touched the water, it parted. And the flood that was coming down began to pile up. Instead of flowing over them and washing them away, it stood up like a wall. And it backed up for miles and miles. And as long as those priests were standing there with the ark of the covenant, the people could go through. The people could pass through that flood and get to the other side and get to that place of promise. Now, why did the water do that? It did it because of this. It did it because of the obedience of the people. And it did it because of the manifest presence of God. Because what was the ark? The ark was the place where God said, I will meet with you. Above the ark, over the mercy seat, between those cherubim. The manifest presence of God was there. So the presence of God went with them down into that flood and caused the flood to part. Now, there's two rivers There's two rivers that children of God need to be standing in. We need to be standing in that river that Satan's spewing out of his mouth trying to destroy everything. We need to be standing in it to hold back that flood. But there's another river that we need to be standing in before we walk into that one. And that's the river of God. That's the river that comes from his presence. The Bible says there there is a river, the streams where I'll make glad the city of God. God talks about a river that flows from his sanctuary, that flows from his presence, that flows from the altar of God, and it brings life wherever it goes. We need to be standing in that river. And, of course, that river is the same river that Jesus talked about, that when the Holy Spirit came, out of a person would flow rivers of living water. We need to be standing in that fullness of the Holy Spirit because you see the Bible says it's not by power or might but by my spirit says the Lord the Bible says the anointing is what breaks the yoke of bondage the anointing of the Holy Spirit so what we need today is Holy Spirit anointed believers that will wade into that flood that Satan is releasing on this world with the presence of God and the word of the Lord and just begin to wade in and declare his word and cry out to God for repentance and forgiveness. Now, why in the world would I preach this message just before vacation Bible school? Well, I want you to see why. Turn with me in the book of Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, of course, the Holy Spirit has just been poured out. People are trying to figure out what's going on. Peter says this is what Joel was talking about way back in the beginning. And I want you to hear what he has to say. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Now hear this. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and so on and so forth. And you get down to verse 21, and it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Folks, I believe with all my heart that young people are going to play a major role in the revival that's about to take place. So we desperately need, we desperately need young people that know Jesus young people that are in right relationship with him, young people that are full of the Holy Spirit and that are willing to go out and proclaim the Word of God to this world in crisis. And I believe that this Vacation Bible School is going to be a time when that takes place. God wants to do something here that that we've not seen before because God is about to do a work that we've not seen before. You know, he said, it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit. It's not something that we, you know, that may happen. He says, I'm going to do it. How many of you know that God, if God says, I will, it's going to happen. 
it's going to happen. So we need to be doing everything that we can to prepare. I believe with all my heart that for America, it's now or never. I believe that. I believe that we're at that critical juncture in the history of this nation that if we don't see a move of God, if we don't see repentance and a return to God, that this nation as you know it today will cease to exist. I believe that because the signs are everywhere. So if you care about this nation, if you care about our children and our grandchildren, now's the time to cry out to God. Now's the time to repent. Now's the time to get right with the Lord. Now's the time to get serious with God. Now's the time to have your children, yourself and your children and your grandchildren in the house of the Lord. Because, folks, let me tell you something. There's a flood coming. It's already started, but it's going to intensify. And after this year, and I believe this with all my heart, I believe this is something God said to me. After this year, America will not be the way that you've always known it to be. We'll either be a nation in revival or a nation in collapse after this year. This year. Now my question is, where do you stand today? You know, we, we, we are people that like things to go on as they are. Man, I don't like the thought of this nation changing drastically, becoming either non-existent or a third world nation. I don't like the idea of enemies coming in and invading the land. I don't like the idea of seeing America come apart at the seams because of the rioting and the devastation. But let me tell you, if you go back through history, you'll find out that when nations turned from God, his hand of protection was lifted, and he allowed enemies to come in. And he allowed nations to be either reduced to just a, just a shell of what they once were or even totally destroyed. And folks, we're not above that. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. We have been blessed beyond comprehension. We've, 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 God has enabled us to do things that no other nation has ever done. But from the beginning, this nation has had one major export, and that was the gospel of Jesus Christ. This nation has sent more missionaries around the world than any other. But you know what our greatest export is today? Pornography. It breaks your heart when you think about it. Once it was the good news of Jesus Christ, and it still goes out. But folks, there's more filth that goes out of this nation than there is gospel. No wonder we're seeing a world in such a condition. So it's now or never. We either turn or we burn one of the two. I believe it with all my heart. I don't like to say that. But that's the reason this vacation Bible school is so important. God wants to raise up. A generation of, of, of Joshua's. A generation of Gideon's. He wants to raise up a generation of, of even Jonah's after his return to the Lord that would walk into a hostile environment with carrying nothing but the word of God. Declare it unashamed and unafraid and see the power of God released. And the only way that's going to happen is for young people to truly know the risen Lord. And truly know the power of the Holy Spirit. So I urge you today, for the sake of this nation, for the sake of your children and grandchildren, pray like you've never prayed. Get serious with God. Because it's a serious time. If you think I'm trying to scare you, I certainly am. Because, folks, it frightens me when I think about what can happen in this nation if we don't have revival. So it's important. It's, it's life and death. That's what it really is. So I urge you today, consider your relationship with God. Do you really know Jesus Christ? Have you given your life to him? Because, folks, listen, he's the only hope that we have. You and I cannot fix what's wrong with this nation. We can't even fix what's wrong with our own life. You know, we can try this, try that. We can, you know, lose weight, gain weight. We can wear a a rug on our head, change our looks a little bit, but that doesn't change what's in here. And what's in here makes the difference. We can't change what's inside of any other person. Only God can do that. And the only thing that will save this nation is a change inside every one of us. So I pray that you will consider, as I have had to stop and consider, Lord, where am I with you? What is my relationship with you like? What is important in my life? 
and how much do I love this nation and how much do I care about the future of my children and my grandchildren folks it's time it's a serious time and it's time for serious Christians so do you know him today have you accepted Jesus? Do you have the promise that if the worst happens, you still have a Savior and a place prepared, and one day we're going to be with Him in a place that's beyond description, in a place where everything is as it should be, where there is no curse, and in fullness of joy? Do you have that promise? And if you are a Christian, how serious are you with that relationship with God? Are you crying out to him for, on behalf of this land in which we live? What about our children and grandchildren? Folks, it's a serious time. Would you bow your heads this morning? Father, as we look at the conditions in our beloved USA, God, we see so much taking place. God, we see young people committing terrible crimes. We see life being so little valued. God, we see racial hatred. We see that ethnic group against ethnic group that you said would be going on when you return. God, we see the signs in the heavens. Lord, we see the blood moons. We, we're looking at this, this Shemitah year, this cycle of sevens and, and the year of release. And when that release comes, if we're not living like we should, it's, it's a devastating thing because in the past two, it's been an economic disaster for this nation and we're rapidly approaching that day again in September of this year God we're we're looking at that ancient prophecy that about the the bricks being fallen to be replaced with hewn stones and the sycamore destroyed and replacing with cedars because of the stoutness and the pride of our heart God we've done the same thing and we witness that symbolic tree of hope wither and die and be dug up and destroyed God, we're seeing all these things happen. And Lord, you said that the very things around us would be the witnesses. You said that the, 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 the moon was for signs and for seasons, God. It was something that was your heavenly billboard. So Lord, as we see all these things taking place around us, we're without excuse. We have no excuse to say, well, I didn't know this was going to happen. Plus, we have your word, Lord, that clearly tells us. So Father, I pray. God, first of all, for forgiveness. God, I confess my sin and the sin of this nation. And God, I ask you for forgiveness and grace. God, I ask you to send repentance and revival. And Lord, I pray for every person seated in this room today. And God, if there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus, that does not have a hope, that regardless of what happens in this world, we have a place in the world to come prepared for us in your presence and everlasting life. Lord, let this be the moment that they say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive my sin. God, save me. I accept Jesus as my Savior, and I give my life to him. I know if they'll pray that, they'll be saved. And, Father, I pray for every Christian, every child of God, that, Lord, we will stop being at ease in Zion, but, Lord, we will get serious with you. Lord, serious in, the, in our prayer time, serious in our study of your word, serious in our participation in, in, in your kingdom. Serious as we pray for one another and support one another. Serious as we share the gospel with those that don't know you. God, I lift this vacation Bible school to you. And God, I ask you to do a mighty work. God, I ask you to bring forth those young Gideons, those, those, those young Joshuas, Lord. I pray that you raise them up because we desperately need them. We need another Jonah that will walk into Nineveh and declare the word of God. Father, we're praying for that today. Lord, I thank you that you're a God of hope and you're a God of amazing grace. And you said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God, help your people to seek your face, to pray, to cry out to you, to repent of their sin to turn from ways that are wrong so that you will heal this land. God, that's my prayer today. So, Lord, we, we thank you for the opportunity to speak into young lives about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit. 
We thank you, Father, for every person that said, I'll, I will be a part. I'll do whatever I can. I ask you to bless them. And God, I pray that you move on the hearts of parents, grandparents, to bring, to send children. Because, Lord, we believe that promise. That if our children are taught of the Lord, great will be the peace of our children. So we love you this morning, Jesus. God, we thank you that you're a God that, that when you send judgment, you always warn. And it gives us opportunity to repent and to return to you. That's the whole idea. So God, I pray that we will before it's too late. I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. If anybody needs prayer, if you need to talk to me about anything, I'll be here for a little while. Remember, set up tonight for Vacation Bible School, the final readiness. And it begins tomorrow night at 630. Please be praying. Come be a part of it. God bless you. Have a wonderful Father's Day.